Thanks for tuning in for your daily dose. We're going to devote now much of this show to the political and the legal earthquake about to shake up the prime minister's residence and the entire nation of Israel. The attorney general is expected to soon announce his intention to indict Benjamin Netanyahu on three criminal charges. According to reports, it could happen at any moment. Hebrew language media reports the attorney general will file one charge of bribery, two counts of breach of trust pending a hearing. Let's take a quick step back and give you a refresher on how we arrived at this moment in history. For about 18 months, police investigated Netanyahu on those three separate corruption cases. They interviewed the prime minister more than a dozen times. They interviewed his wife, his son, his extended family, his friends, and his legal team. Police interviewed witnesses from around the world, from Washington to London to Australia. And in December, after nearly two years of investigative work, police closed their cases. They turned them over to the attorney general with a recommendation for bribery in all three cases. But it's the attorney general who makes the call, and he, again, reportedly is ready to file one bribery charge and two lesser charges for breach of trust. So what are these three cases? Let's explain them to you as if you have no idea what's about to happen. Case 1000, this is the Gifts Affair. Police say Netanyahu was bribed by billionaire businessmen friends to advance their personal and their financial interests. Things like tax breaks, help with selling stocks, securing long-term visas. Police say Netanyahu got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of expensive cigars and champagne in exchange. Reports here that the attorney general will file a breach of trust charge. The second case, case 2000, police say Netanyahu negotiated with the publisher of a big Israeli paper called Yidiot Akronot to get favorable coverage. In exchange for that good press, Netanyahu agreed to support a new law that would hurt the circulation of Yidiot's biggest competitor. Again here, the attorney general reportedly is looking at breach of trust. The third case, the big one, case 4000. Police say Netanyahu approved a merger between communications giant company Bezek with another company because Netanyahu was bribed. The owner of Bezek, a guy named Shaul Elovich, promised Netanyahu glowing coverage on the Bezek-owned news websites. The merger was a windfall for that guy, Elovich. He earned millions of dollars. In this case, the attorney general reportedly will agree that this is a clear case of bribery and will support an indictment for that charge. With me now in studio is Haran Feinstein. He is a former Israeli judge, legal uh, expert. Sir, thank you so much for being with us. I want to ask first about this uh, uh, Hail Mary pass in the sports term. Likud is going. The Likud party of Netanyahu is at the high court. They're asking for this indictment to be, the announcement to be held off for now. Could that work? Could we be seeing a delay of a few hours, a few days, a few months, or, or not at all? I... I can guess that the Supreme Court will not uh, entertain the, the application, but I think that they should, because they, they, you see the main point here, besides the uh, allegations themselves, the fact that the Attorney General comes out with the, all these indict, indictments, so-called indictments, uh, one month before the election. And that he should not have done. But do you think that the Supreme Court they will not accept the, the request for a stay, that they will... They, they won't, they won't. I unfortunately, wanna... unfortunately, but they should. Uh, we have a precedent of the Lieberman party. Four years ago, they came out with the same scandal uh, exactly four weeks before the election, and it damaged the party completely. You're talking about Avigdor Lieberman here, another former uh, a popular politician, lawmaker. He himself faced corruption charges, eventually acquitted, but it hurt his party in the polls. Right, after 17 years, though. Uh, I want to ask about two of these charges, uh, bribery. People generally around the world understand what bribery is. Maybe it's money, maybe it's the promise of, of gifts or the promise of, of land or whatever. But breach of trust, that's a much different kind of charge. Very, very, what uh, what very, is breach of trust? Can I you define I, it? I don't know. No one knows. No, right? one, that's knows. Part of the... no one knows. There's no definition. It's actually, uh, you know retroactively by the decision of the judge. But you cannot define a breach of uh, uh, trust. But one, uh, the argument would be that in, in his capacity, right, as the prime minister, as an elected official, he used his access, his information, his knowledge. Who doesn't? What politician doesn't use his information? while serving as a politician or afterwards making a lot of money? I guess the argument would be legally right, Judge, that, that the Mandelblit, the state prosecutors say he used this access 
to it, hurt, it wasn't in the interests of his office or for the state of Israel, but to help personal friends with personal interests that impacted negatively right. Israel. So I tell you, the decision of the president, which I know, is really. Uh, they state that if you really help your friends, that might be a breach of a uh, trust. trust. But it's so vague, it c you cannot define it. So actually, you know retroactively whether you act according to the law, against the law. And that the whole idea is against the whole concept of law, which states that you have to know your legal situation beforehand and during the act. Uh, now, in this specific case, you know only retroactively, and it's up to the decision of each judge. Judge, I want to ask about case 4000, the breach of trust, which is a, it's a difficult case, uh, charge to really pin down. Right. That's case 1000 and 2000, what I explained. 4000, reportedly, the evidence is much more clear. There was a secret, unapproved meeting before the merger went through. Netanyahu pushed for this merger between Bezek, that communications company, and another communications company. There was uh, texts and emails exchanged. This was a much clearer case of bribery. There is evidence in this case. Is this the case, legally, that really should worry Netanyahu? I cannot give you a straight answer because I don't know the facts. Sure. I heard the attorney general on the one hand, and I heard Netanyahu on the other, and he said, listen, you cannot blame me because as far as I know, Netanyahu says, Ilovich lost a lot of money out of the merger. So if he lost money, didn't gain money, where is the bribery? In general, I want to return to something Netanyahu said, Judge, and get your opinion on, on the rule of law versus the importance of an open democracy. Netanyahu used the expression that an ampute, uh, a thief, an accused thief, the, before the uh, due process can play out, so they cut off his arm, and then they find out he wasn't the thief after all. He's Absolutely. found innocent. You can't replace the arm. Absolutely Does this right. hurt democracy? This is going to be, he won't have the hearing yet, Netanyahu. When the indictment comes in, could be any minute now. But when it comes in, it'll still be an open drama with the election hanging over it. Does it hurt democracy? Of course. And I tell you more than that, because it just uh, exactly one month ago, the yeah. Supreme Court came out with a decision stating that the hearing should be before deciding. I have the case right here, before the, is, uh, the issue, uh, no, issuing a writ or indictment, which means what they did, they upside down. They reversed the, the, regular, the normal procedures stated by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said here, in this, this one, time, one month ago, they said specifically first hearing and then decision. In this specific case, they have the decision to indict him. And now I said, listen, after I indicted you, I want to listen to you. But Why? That, politically, I mean, Netanyahu had a majority in the government. He was in power. He decided to go to early elections. That's his choice to move the timetable so up. So what? So I mean, the argument would be that Mandelblatt, the attorney general, right? right. He, when he's ready to make his decision, he's not going to hold off. No one's above no, the law. No, he should hold off until the, end of, uh, until the, the elections are over. What he's doing is not only damaging... But when he's ready, out. he's ready. Why should he hold off? Be because he damages democracy and he go he's going to influence the election. And you have the precedent of Mr. Lieberman. So I'm asking you a question. You probably you don't have an answer. Nobody has it. Why can't he wait until April 11, the day after the election? But then the argument would be that the people cast their votes for a party, a prime minister, then yes. right after the election, he's indicted. That changes everything. So they should what? know beforehand. So, it, know no, before. no, they, no. But if he is acquitted... Well, I don't know. Okay, so let's say that he uh, he's acquitted, right? Can you bring back the situation? No, that, again, his analogy of the so arm. Where, where is the democracy? Realistically, whether we like it or not, whether you like it or not, if this this everything is subject to a hearing, is that a formality? Can Netanyahu change prosecutors' minds in that hearing later? My guess that he cannot. It's a statutory discretion by the law, by the criminal procedure law. Sure. And once he made a decision and it's coming out in, the, in public, listen, I want to indict you, he, he will hardly change his mind. I don't believe it. All right, again, this is a developing story. We're waiting now to see when the Attorney General will make the official announcement. There is a petition, a last-minute petition to hold off that's being filed now at the High Court of Justice. Oh, yeah. We'll continue to follow that.